This is part 67 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss two very important services provided by ASP.NET Core, User Manager and Sign-in Manager. Let's understand the use of these two built-in services with an example. This is the same user registration page that we've been working with in our previous video in the series. At the moment, when we issue a POST request by clicking this register button, notice we get 404 not found error. This is because at the moment within our account controller, we do not have a register action method that can handle HTTP POST. So let's include another register action method and decorate this version with HTTP POST instead of HTTP GET. This method receives register view model as an input parameter. Let's call the parameter model and bring in employee management dot view models namespace. Now what do we want to do when we click this register button? We want to create a new user using the information provided in the underlying SQL Server database. For that we're going to use the built-in user manager service provided by ASP.NET Core. Notice it accepts a generic parameter. We use this generic parameter to specify the user class that we want this user manager service to work with. At the moment, we are using the built-in identity user class as the argument for the generic parameter. The generic parameter is an extension point. So this means we can create our own custom user class with any additional data that we want to capture about the user and then plug in that custom class as an argument for the generic parameter instead of the built-in identity user class. We'll discuss how to do that in our upcoming videos. For now, let's just use this built-in identity user class. As the name implies, we use this user manager service to manage users of our application. This class contains methods like create async, delete async, update async, etc. As the names imply, we use these methods to create, delete and update users respectively. To be able to use this user manager service, we need to inject it into our account controller. Back in our account controller, let's include a constructor and we want to inject user manager of identity user. Let's bring in the required namespace and let's call the parameter user manager. In addition to user manager, we also need this sign in manager. As the name implies, we use this service to manage user sign in and this class contains methods like sign in async, sign out async, is signed in, etc. Notice just like user manager, sign in manager also accepts a generic parameter. So we could specify the type of user class that we want this service to work with. So in addition to user manager, let's also inject sign in manager. Let's call the parameter sign in manager. Next, let's ask Visual Studio to generate the required private fields for both these services by pressing control period first for user manager and then for sign in manager. The first thing that we want to do in this register action method is check if this incoming model object is valid. So if model state dot is valid. If the incoming model object is valid, then we want to write code here to create the new user. If it's not, then we want to re-render the register view and display any validation errors we might have. For that, let's pass the model object to the view. If the model state is valid, let's create a new identity user object. And then we want to copy the data that we have in this incoming model object into this identity user object. Now, if we take a look at our register view, what data are we capturing? We're capturing user's email and password. We're going to use user's email as their username. So username equals model.email. And email is also equal to model.email. If you're wondering why are we copying the data from this incoming model object into the identity user object, well that's because the built-in user manager service works with 
identity user object. Now for us to be able to create the new user, we are going to make use of this create async method. So on the injected user manager service, let's use create async method. Notice there are two overloaded versions. We are going to use the second overloaded version where we can also pass the password. So the first parameter is the instance of identity user object and the second parameter is the user password. And where do we get the password from? It's present on the password property of our incoming model object. The password is then hashed and securely stored in the underlying database table. We'll look at that in action in just a bit. As the name implies, this create async method is an asynchronous method, so we should await it. And let's store the result that we get back in a variable called result. And since we are using await keyword, we need to turn this register method into an async method. For that, let's use the async keyword and then wrap the result that we are getting back, in this case, I action result using a task. If you're new to the concept of async methods, then please check out this part 101 from our C Sharp tutorial for beginners course. On this result object that we are getting back, which is of type identity result, as you can see from the IntelliSense, we have a Boolean property called succeeded. We can use that property to check if the user is created successfully. What do we want to do after the user is successfully created? Well, let's use this built-in sign-in manager, sign-in async method and sign the user in. Notice on the injected sign-in manager service instance, we have sign-in async method. And this method takes two parameters. The first parameter is the identity user object instance. We have that in this user variable. So let's pass that as the first parameter. The second parameter is a Boolean parameter. We use this parameter to specify if we want to create a session cookie or a permanent cookie. A session cookie is immediately lost after we close the browser window, whereas a permanent cookie is retained on the client machine even after the browser window is closed. In our case, we want to create a session cookie. So let's set is persistent boolean parameter to false. As the name implies, this method also is an async method. So let's use the await keyword and then redirect the user to index action of our home controller. On this result object that we are getting back, we also have errors collection property. If the succeeded property has returned false, that means we were not successful in creating the user. If we are not successful, we want to loop through each error that we have in the errors collection. As we are looping through each error, let's add it to the model state object. For that, on the model state object, we have add model error. As a key, I'm going to pass an empty string and to get the error message itself, on the error loop variable, we have description. These validation errors are then displayed in our register view by this validation summary tag helper. With all these changes in place, let's run our project. Notice when I try to register a new user without providing any data, we see the required validation errors as expected. Now let's provide a valid email address. And then I'm going to use a very simple password, ABC. And let's click register button. Notice we have validation errors related to the password complexity. Password must be at least six characters. It must have at least one non-alphanumeric character, at least one digit, and at least one uppercase. We did not configure these rules. Where are these rules coming from and how to customize these? We'll answer these questions in our next video. For now, let's provide a password that meets all these complexity rules and then click the register button. Notice the user is registered and we are redirected to the list view where we see the list of employees. Now if we take a look at SQL Server Object Explorer and then the data that we have in this ASP.NET users database table, 
Notice the username is prajim at prajimtech.com. Email is also the same. And look at the password. The password is not stored in plain text. It is hashed and then securely stored here. So even if someone gets unauthorized access to this database table, they would not know what the actual password is. In our next video, we'll discuss the default password complexity rules provided by ASP.NET Core and how to customize them to meet our application specific requirements. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.